Subscribe if you're always missing a sixth person. This is a step-by-step -step guide to the Last Wish raid. To be transparent, this guide includes the Riven Chi strategy. However, I will be considering a separate guide for completing Riven the intended way. Before we begin, decide on a system to communicate and coordinate these symbols amongst your team. If you have no idea, just begin describing what you see. Silence will wipe the team. You really could run a sword this whole raid. Tractor Cannon is very important nowadays. You're fighting Taken, so be prepared to clear a lot of ads. Titans should crash and bring Will at the very least. This is the full rundown of this raid guide. Load in, enter the main doors, and go to the left. Wait for the secret purple door to open. Make your way across and I'll meet you at the first encounter. Kill Kali by completing the correct plates and then go to DPS. You'll see which plates you must complete by looking at the center hanging symbols. As shown, we have two infinity snakes, two number eight snakes, and two cloud shaped snakes. So everyone pick a symbol and go to that plate. Here, I choose a plate marked by the cloud shaped snake. Complete the plate by standing in the slice of the plate that is not contaminated. Here the middle one is clean and has no balls. So keep moving to the next slice of the plate that is clear. The boss might visit you so do your best to hide or strafe to avoid her attacks. Eventually a taken knight will appear. Kill it to officially complete your plate. Notice when the knight dies, one of the center hanging symbols disappears. This indicates that you completed a correct plate. Completing a random or incorrect plate spawns ogres in the middle. Once all plates are done, it's time for DPS, so everyone meet in the middle. Wait here, the boss will show up immediately after this message appears. Be ready. Be patient and alert. She will appear. She'll spawn on one of these three wedges, here, here, or here. When she does spawn, go all out on her. I prefer the sword because her head can move around a lot. However, do not get tunnel vision. Watch for this message, which is her wipe attack. If you're not paying attention, you will die. She'll try to wipe you three times per DPS phase. However, you are able to avoid her wipe attack. We know this message indicates the wipe is coming, so just stop attacking early on and look at the area under Kali. There will be a bunch of stained glass doors, six should be open, and the rest closed. Only the doors underneath the boss's current location will be active and opened up. Shown here, I'm looking at the doors in the two areas that the boss is not currently occupying. They're not active, nor are they open. Only the set of doors directly underneath the boss are active. Everyone should climb into an open door to avoid the wipe attack. You could assign beforehand who takes which door, but honestly, it can be a mess. If you were to do this, stick with reading from top to bottom and left to right. But honestly, if you leave early, you'll have plenty of time to find a door. Once her wipe is done, follow her and continue the attack until you see the message again telling you to go hide and rinse and repeat. Notice how we're using up each respective set of doors as she moves to her last position. The footage shown is with five people not even optimized, so I doubt you'll even have to use this last set of doors. Notes: the point of killing the knights is each dead knight unlocks a set of three doors. So, one knight could be responsible for this set of three doors or this set of three doors. A full team killing one knight each will yield 18 doors to be opened up. Here's a short jumping area. I'll meet you at this set of large doors. Kill Shirochi. The rundown is follow her to these ritual altars. There are a total of three floors and six altars for this encounter, two per floor. Damage her at each altar. She has six gated health bars, corresponding perfectly with the six altars. Travel to each floor by completing a puzzle and jumping on teacups. The game plan is follow her and fight her at two altars per floor, do a puzzle, and repeat. So add clear and chase her to an altar. There will be three platforms, so choose any three people to get ready to hop on, but don't hop on just yet. Soon, this laser egg will appear on each platform. As a team, hop on and grab your egg and shoot each other with a laser. Decide if you all want to shoot the purse on the right or on the left. In no time, you'll break her demonic ritual and you can damage her. Damage her until one of her six health bars is gone. Then add clear and chase her to the next ritual altar. Remember, there are two altars per floor. Take note of the following. For the platforms, wait next to your platform and jump on as a team. Give a countdown. Don't impatiently jump onto the platform just yet because being on the platform causes tick damage. Sorry, Axel, but you jumped a little bit too early and you can even see him flinching from damage. And he's gonna be dead. Assume you did the first two altars. Time for your first puzzle. Puzzle time. As you enter the puzzle room, you'll see three plates on the walls. Two will be blank, and this left one will always be the first one to start working on. Also note the 3x3 three three platforms in the center of the room. These are platforms for you and your team to hop on. The whole idea of this is to hop on the correct platforms as a team. That is how you complete each plate on the wall. When a plate is stepped on, it actually corresponds to the respective location on the current plate you're working on. Notice how stepping on this left middle platform caused the respective spot on the plate to get filled in. Same with this bottom right piece. Once all pieces are filled in, you receive this message indicating you successfully finished that plate on the wall. Finish all three plates on the walls in order to jump on the teacups and move onwards to the next floor. 
AdClear is vital here because these phalanxes can boop your teammates off the platforms. Let's talk exact steps. Assign four people as puzzle people. If you'd like, assign a number one through four. You could read the four positions on the plates using English, so top to bottom or left to right. The plate of interest will always have four unfilled spots. Puzzle people should look directly at the plate to have a good point of view and orientation. This plate is actually a grid of squares. Here's an example. Looking directly at this plate, let's assume these are the unfilled spots. Therefore, the corresponding platforms to hop on will be these. And the puzzle people positions would be person 1, person 2, person 3, person 4. Another example. The correct platforms to hop on are these. So person 1 here, person 2 there, person 3, and person 4. Last one. This one's easy. It's just the four corners. Person 1, person 2, person 3, person 4. Entering the puzzle room, this is what you're greeted with. Start with the left wall plate. Puzzle people look directly at it for the best orientation and point of view. You need to fill in these spots, therefore locate the correct platforms to hop on which would be these. Give a team countdown 3, 2, 1 and jump onto those platforms. First plate complete. Hop off those platforms to solve the next plate. Look directly at this next plate for the best orientation, determine which platforms to hop on, and we can rotate the orientation as well so it makes sense in our head. So count it down and hop on those platforms and complete this plate. Repeat for the last plate, remember to look directly at it for the best orientation, determine the correct platforms to hop on, count it down, hop on and complete this last plate. Note, be careful, do not do what I'm showing you here. I'm not focusing and I accidentally jump on this left middle platform for no reason. And as we complete the later puzzles, one of the required platforms is that very same platform that I jumped on already. I jump on it because we need this platform, but the platform turns orange. The puzzle rejects my input because I already touched that specific platform. You cannot return to a platform that you already touched. So call a friend to hop on instead of you, like one of the AdClear people. Shown here, Shredder takes over and the platform is no longer orange. He also saves Axel here. When you're on a platform, you take tick damage, and it can be enough to kill you. You can guard with a sword to slow down the damage. As you get to each altar and make your way up the floors, there are only two total puzzle areas. Along the way, you might see this relic, but you can ignore it for now. At the final altar, just keep hacking away at her and you'll be done. Up next is another jumping section. Feel free to slow this down and look at the path. I'll meet you at the next encounter. The Morgoth battle. Let's look at the arena. There is a right side and a left side. This encounter largely depends on this left and right side concept. There will also be these taken tornadoes. Collect enough of these to damage the boss. You need to collect a total of 10. Some will appear on the left side and some will appear on the right side. You can predict when and where they'll spawn by looking for these thunderclouds. Okay, so what? Well, when you pick these up, you receive a stackable debuff called Taken Strength. Pick up two of these and you have Taken Strength times two. You could pick up one more for 3 total, but picking up that third one kills you. As shown here, I have taken strength times 2, I pick up this third one, and then I die. Okay, so what do we do with this? Well, the very first person to hold 2 taken strength will be trapped, just like poor Shredder here. As shown, I have taken strength times 2, and I immediately get trapped. When trapped, all you can do is wait for your teammates to come release you. In the background, you'll see Vault 40 come over with a very familiar item that he'll use to free me. That item drops from killing these Eye of Riven Captains. These captains will spawn around the arena. It's the same relic found in the Shirochi encounter. When you pick it up and press the grenade button, you can save your trapped teammates. Shown here, I'm going over to Shredder who is trapped. I would like to free him, because the poor thing got taken strength times 2 and was trapped. Notice how I don't have any taken strength. The Antemporal Essence is something else. I press grenade button to cleanse him, but notice how I now have 2 stacks of taken strength. Meaning, cleansing causes me to steal however many stacks a person is carrying. This has repercussions, because example, if I already have 1 stack, and I attempt to cleanse Shredder, who was trapped after picking up his own 2 stacks, I'm going to end up with 3 stacks total, which will instantly kill me, and surely enough, it does. Now, if you know you're going to be trapped because you're picking up 2 stacks, just tell the team that hey, I'm going to be in the center, like Shredder is, or like I am here. The whole point is to collect 10 of these to do DPS. But since this is a raid, it's not as straightforward. So let's talk step by step. We need 10 total. At the start, the first one will be in center. Pick it up to begin the encounter. Here's the starting condition and split the team up 3 on each side. One person on left, pick up the first taken strength. Then do nothing else for the entire encounter except add clear. Then, two taken strengths will spawn on both left and right sides. A left side all-star should pick up both left side ones. Then go to the center, because you're the very first one with two stacks. You'll be trapped. Meanwhile, on the right side, two people each should pick up one taken strength each. In total, we have picked up five so far. That left side person with two stacks will get trapped. For example, let's say it's Shredder getting trapped here. We need to save him. 
and either of these smiley faces marked in blue can do so because they have no stacks. Left side blue face, grab the cleanse relic and do your job. Now that he's released, this hero now has two stacks. Do nothing else for the encounter. So go stand over there. Two more taking strengths will then spawn on both left and right sides. Left side person who was just released and has no stacks. Pick up both on the left side. Meanwhile, the two right side people with one stack each. Go ahead and pick up another stack each. At this point, one of the times two taking strength holding people on either left or right side will be trapped. So whoever does get trapped, go to the center. The last free person with zero stacks, go and get the cleanse relic and cleanse that person. This means we are now holding nine total as a team. One more. Make sure to add clear to tell the game that you're ready to move on. And in no time, the 10th and final taken strength will spawn in the middle in front of the boss. Anyone without two stacks can pick it up. I'll assign the zero stacks person to do it in this example. Shown here, Vault 40 has no stacks. He picks up this final taken strength. Doing so, the boss's shield disappears and you can wail on him. Fusions, slug shotties, and swords are great. He's a big pushover. Final note, there are different ways to collect the taking strengths, such as having one person on the right side pick up two at a time, just like the left side person is doing. There's another short platforming section and I'll meet you at the vault. Unlocking the vault. Your job here is to unlock this door with these beams of light. You need to generate three beams of light to open the door. Other than the center spherical device, you have a rock room, a room with a set of stairs, and a room with trees. These three rooms are all connected to each other by a tunnel system. You will have to use these tunnels to reach the other rooms. Here's a clearer view of the encounter. The tunnel system is in blue. In the center, there are three glowing plates. This is the heart of the encounter. These three plates correspond to their respective rooms as well. This should be easy to see because the trees plate is right in front of trees area. The stairs plate is right in front of stairs area. And the rock plate is right in front of rocks area. Whew, take a breather. Let this sink in for a bit. Make the following teams. Each area will have one ad clear paired up with one reader. For example, yellow smiley faces are ad clear. Magenta smiley faces will be a trees reader, a rock reader, and a stairs reader. Ad clear, kill ads, but try not to go into the rock tree or stairs room. Ad clear isn't difficult here, but try to avoid staying in the rooms for too long if you happen to be in there, because you can get trapped by this darkness wall. Your main focus is to kill these knights, which will wipe your team. These knights spawn in the rooms, so ad clear, you could be proactive if you'd like and hunt them down but they'll immediately try to sacrifice themselves on the plates. Even if they're sacrificing, they're still killable. So add clear, be alert, and look out for any knights trying to sacrifice on the three plates. Readers, I hope you have pen and paper. No, seriously, it can help. Or be fast at typing, because we're going to be reading and describing symbols and taking note of the correct resulting buff types that we need. Assign a reader for each plate and keep that plate for the whole encounter. Readers will step on and stay on the plates. Doing so, you will each be presented with three symbols. This is a rundown. If you notice or recognize something, and we'll get to that something soon, if you recognize it on the left, this left means penumbra type buff required. However, if you notice that that something is on the right side, that means that an entumbra type buff is required. So readers, you have two buffs of interest to pay attention to. Breathe, because we're going to go step by step what the readers are doing. All I'll say for the symbols is don't be silent. Just start talking, start describing it as best as you can. Readers, step onto your plates and stay on. Each of you will see a unique set of symbols in front of you. Assume this is what each person sees. Very important, I am highlighting the middle symbol for each reader because that is the first symbol each reader should focus on first. Remember, focus on the middle symbol first. We'll get to the rest later. Quick insert here. We are going to start reading, but traditionally, and in LFG, the stairs plate person reads off first. They'll always be the first one to read and start off the reading round. Obviously, you could have the trees or rock plate person start off the reading round instead. So, stairs plate person, look at your center symbol. I highlighted it in magenta. Say confidently out loud that my middle symbol is a pole dancing dragon. Now, the other two readers, each of you take a look at your three symbols. Do either of you have this pole dancing dragon anywhere? As you can see here, that that pole dancing dragon symbol is one of the three symbols for the rock plate person. Rock plate person should now say out loud, I found that pole dancing dragon symbol and it is the left side symbol for me. The rock plate person just said it was the left side symbol. He found it on the left side. Remember, left equals penumbra. So somebody write this down somewhere in Fireteam chat or on paper. Write down that rock side needs penumbra type buff. With that written down, we can move on. We're not done with rock plate person yet though. Rock plate person, tell the team what you see for your middle symbol. 
I've marked it here in magenta, and say out loud to the team, it is a bird sitting on a branch looking to the left. That is my middle symbol. This bird sitting on a branch symbol happens to be one of the three symbols for the tree's plate person. Tree's plate person should now say out loud, I see that bird sitting on a branch symbol. Out of the three symbols I have, it is the right side one. Remember, finding something on the right side means Antumbra buff type is needed. So, tree's plate person found the symbol and it was a right side symbol. This means the tree's plate requires an Antumbra type buff. So write that down in fire team chat or on pen and paper. Tree's plate person, we're not done with you yet. Now you should read your middle symbol. I marked it here in magenta. Please say out loud, my middle symbol is infinity snake. That infinity snake symbol happens to be one of the three symbols that the stairs plate person has. Out of the three symbols for stairs plate person, it is a symbol on the right. You know the drill by now. Stairs plate person, say out loud, I found that infinity snake symbol. Out of the three symbols that I have, it is the right side symbol. And we know right side means antumbra. Therefore, the stairs plate will need an antumbra buff. It'll usually be two of one type, and the last remaining one is the other type, so you can use process of elimination. I've never seen it be three of one kind, though. Now that you have your list of which buff goes where, readers can now step off the plates and let's go get your buffs. You'll find those buffs in your respective rooms. However, you'll find that only one room is open at a time. The other two rooms will be closed off with the darkness wall. In this image, the only room open is the stairs area. So let's go in there. Be patient and kill ads, but eventually a taken solar shield captain will spawn. Killing him drops a relic, which is basically the same cleanse relic as before. But this time, when you pick it up, take note of the type of buff you now have. It will either be Antumbra or Penumbra, or Akka, right or left. You know which buff you have, but it's not as simple as just killing the taken captain, walking out of your room, whether it be trees area, rock area, or stairs area, and then going to your plate to dunk your buff. This is a raid after all. For example, Johnny is in Tree's area. He's fighting the Taken Solar Shield Captain. He kills it. Now he can pick up the Entumbra or Penumbra Relic buff. However, the moment he kills it, he gets trapped by this Darkness Wall. He can't just walk back out. In fact, anytime these captains die, a Darkness Wall will close the area where that captain died. There will always be two closed rooms and one open room, but the open room will change. When your buddy gets trapped, it's the entire team's responsibility to guide that player and tell him which area is open so that he can travel immediately in that direction. Shown here, Boji begins to move to the left. However, we tell him, no, 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 go to trees. Trees area is open. The other way is closed. So he switches direction. We can see him begin to move to the right. He's moving to the right because he's going to travel through the tunnels that connect all the areas. Eventually, he'll emerge from the trees area. Then he can go to whichever plate he needs to go to, because don't forget about the list of which plate needs which type of buff. Shown here, apparently, Tree's plate needed a Penumbra buff. I have a Penumbra buff, so I go over to the Tree's plate, I stand on it, and press grenade button to dunk it. If you see this flickering object on a plate, that means that plate still needs a dunk. Dunk it the correct buff removes it. You can use this info to your advantage, because any plate without the smoky object will not need a dunk anymore. Communicating which door is open is probably the most important mechanic. That's because anytime a captain dies, the darkness walls shift, and your entire team should be shouting at you which area is open. They should be watching your movement and let you know if you're going the right direction or not. Shown here, I'm literally watching Booty Bandit and reassuring him that he's going in the right direction and that Tree's area is open. Exit from Trees. We do not want that person with the buff to go the wrong way, then have to turn around and then go the right way. You do not want to waste time because remember, those captains are spawning and when they die, the darkness walls shift. For example, I just killed the captain here and I picked up the Antumbra buff. But my team is not telling me which way to go or which area is open, so I'm stuck. I could guess, but let's assume I wait. Eventually, they tell me the right way, but when I get there, the darkness wall closes up on me. It's because someone killed a captain somewhere and we just took too long to tell me where to go. By the way, when traveling in tunnels, you can shoot the relic at these phalanxes. Rinse and repeat this process until all three plates receive the correct cleanse. Then, readers, step back onto the plates to read the next set of symbols. In total, you'll read a total of three times. So that set of three center plates will get cleansed a total of three times each. You'll gain a beam of light after each successful round. Finish three rounds of reading and cleansing and you're done. I'll meet you at Riven. For time purposes, this will be the Riven Cheese, aka the Efficient Method. 
I recommend everyone bring a sword and one tractor cannon. Well Warlock is mandatory here. Everyone else on burst supers. Let's go step by step. You'll start in this room with three plates on each side. Each person hop on a plate to begin the encounter. You'll all begin to drop down, but prepare to move slowly towards the blue crystal side. Ignore the yellow lantern side. You want to start moving towards the blue crystal side. Remember, just look for the blue crystal door side. Follow this route here. Once you enter this room, sit right here and watch this dark wall. There are two potential outcomes from watching this dark wall. You will either see a shadow figure of her move across this dark wall, or you will not. As you sit here, once you see this message, begin counting down to 5 seconds. Within these 5 seconds, you will either see her shadow move across the dark wall, or you will not. Shown here, we see the message, we begin counting down, and we see her shadow move across within 5 seconds. You can see her tail right here. If you do see her like this, do not leave this room. Kill ads. Kill a taken solar shield captain who will drop a relic. Once the relic timer is around 10 seconds or so, gather here at the left side of the room. You can hear her when she's about to spawn. And you'll have this darkest aura on your screen and a debuff. Pop a well to stay alive. She'll be immune for just a moment, but once she is not, make sure to track her cannon in her foot and then go all out on her. Swords work well here along with burst supers. Also take a listen to the audio when she's about to spawn. You'll be okay with damage, as shown this is with 5 people in Tractor Cannon. Once you get to her final stand health, she'll teleport you away for some platforming. Just keep going upwards and you might need to turn around and look up to find the next platform. You can also follow the route shown in the footage here. Touch that taken strength and you'll return to her room. You can either shoot her mouth with a sniper or linear, like this, or you can go back to her foot and start hacking away at it. When she dies, try to stay away from her body and her foot because she'll flail around and you can die from that. Then, only one thing left to do. Go inside of her mouth, travel down her esophagus, and then destroy her heart. Let's go over the other outcome, if you don't see her shadow. So you wait for this message and you count up to 5 seconds. You still don't see anything on the dark wall, no shadow moving across. Well that's okay, exit the throne room and then hug this right side wall, right here until you see joining allies. Stay here. You get teleported back to this main room, follow this route. All we're doing is just walking all the way around to another room where Riven will spawn instead. Once we get there, we're gonna do the same thing, which is hack away at her foot, or you can shoot her mouth if linears are still strong in the game. Now that she's spawned, just go over to her foot on the left side, pop a well of radiance, pop tractor cannon, and then start doing the same thing, hacking away at her foot. Get her to final stand, and you'll still get teleported here, and you'll need to parkour. It's the same thing, just shoot her mouth if you'd like, with linear or sniper, if they're still strong in the game but just go back to her foot and start hacking away at it. Welcome to the final encounter. There are two parts happening at the same time during this encounter. Bring Riven's heart to the final destination. This is a relay race where each member needs to hold the heart and walk with it. Almost every member will be a participant. We'll be walking from Riven's mouth through the vault to this final altar. The other part is getting teleported to this dream world. Here you'll pick up Taken Strengths. Picking up Taken Strengths is the main mechanic that helps runners continue to run through this path. The same Taken Strength concept applies. Picking one up gives you one stack of Taken Strength. So there's a relay race happening in the real world. A race to the finish while passing the baton to the next available runner. At the same time, there's something happening in the dream world that's helping to maintain that relay race. Let's talk about the relay race first. Prepare for a lot of information. As you carry the heart, everyone else should be clearing the way for you. Machine guns are perfect here. As a carrier, you are actually surrounded by a bubble. Do your best, like Shredder here, to slow down and make sure all teammates are inside as much of the time as possible. Anyone outside the bubble will have a stacking debuff. Step back into the bubble to clear it. Stay outside too long and you'll die at 10 stacks. Let's take a small one second break and breathe. Now it's not like you can just carry the heart the whole way by yourself. This is because you only have a limited amount of time to be the carrier. That timer is the fate's chosen. If it runs out, you are teleported to the dream world, and the next runner will have to take your place and keep running. Fortunately for each runner, we are allowed one timer refresh. 
a successful refresh will make Riven's heart beat slower. On the other hand, failing to do so will cause Riven's heart to beat quicker. She doesn't want you to refresh a timer. This refresh has hurt the relay race because you just lost an additional extra 15 seconds worth of travel time for the current runner. The extra time helps in the long run, especially if the runners get lost. Instead of being here, you only had enough time to travel here. So we have one refresh available for each runner. And this is great because each runner has an extra 15 seconds to run farther. Take a deep breath, there's some more information. Now, if you pulled off that refresh successfully, after your brand new 15 seconds expires, you will get teleported to the dream world no matter what. And if you failed to pull off that refresh, you will also get teleported no matter what. Then one person out of the ad clear team will be chosen to be the next runner. So don't lose focus when you're ad clearing. Pay attention to the messages on your screen. Pick up the heart when it's your turn to keep the relay race alive. Always try to refresh the timer. Her heart will beat slower and this gives the current runner more time to run. Then just rinse and repeat with the next chosen runner. And don't forget, when your timer runs out, you get teleported to Dream World. Take a breath, some small details. As a runner, you should always be counting down your timer out loud. This way, the team is aware of the situation. Counting down out loud helps refreshes because you want to run down the timer as much as you can before refreshing. Everyone should try and hug the runner and stay within the bubble because of the Creeping Darkness debuff. However, if you know teleportation is imminent because of the timer, do not stand on top of the runner or hover over the heart during teleportation. In this image, I'm literally on top of the runner and inside of his bubble when his timer runs out. This causes both myself and the runner to get teleported to the dream world. This means we just lost one extra runner who could have been involved in the relay race. Enough about runners, let's talk about the dream world. In the dream world, you'll find Taken Strengths, but a very specific number of Taken Strengths. And again, picking up one grants you one stack of Taken Strength. Now you'll see that only a specific number will spawn. And this is because the number of Taken Strengths that spawn is equal to the total number of people in the dream world, which should be equal as well to the total number of teleported people to the dream world. Let's break this down real quick. Each literal teleportation of a person triggers a time to pick up Taken Strengths round. Taken Strengths will only spawn during teleportation events. Because remember, each literal teleport triggers a Taken Strength pickup round. Nothing else will trigger the Taken Strengths to spawn. So, if a third person was just teleported, there would be three total Taken Strengths spawning immediately. If a fourth person was just teleported, there would be four total Taken Strengths spawning immediately so on and so forth for the 5th and 6th people teleported. As the Taken Strengths spawn, the Dream World people should all pick up one each. There should be exactly enough for each person in there to pick up one. When the last available Taken Strength is picked up, Riven's heart beats slower. This confirms that the last one was picked up. It also confirms that the runner's timer in the real world was successfully refreshed. In addition to Riven's heart beating slower, all Taken Strength stacks on your team will disappear. The game is smart enough to reset the buff because you will be collecting more Taken Strengths when they spawn during later teleportation events. This is probably the most important note about the Dream World. Picking up the last available Taken Strength is the exact mechanic that refreshes the runner's timer to 15 seconds outside in the real world. This is really important. However, keep in mind Taken Strengths will not spawn during these timer refreshes. They will only spawn during teleportation events. I repeat, Taken Strengths will not spawn during runner timer refreshes. One more note before step by step. If you were the first person to pick up the heart in the beginning and you got teleported in first, it's a general rule of thumb that you will always pick up the final Taken Strength available during each round of Taken Strength pickup duty. Shown here, I was the first person teleported into the dream world and I'm literally standing next to the last available Taken Strength. I'm telling everyone not to touch this one. This one's mine. Everyone else go pick up one each. You can see Vault 40 in the background just picked up one for example. I'm waiting to pick it up because I'm listening and waiting for the runner to count down low enough before picking it up. That way, we're refreshing at the best possible time. As shown, I'm waiting for the runner's countdown. You see Vault 40 pick up one in the background immediately. He does not need to wait. Once I hear the timer is low enough, I pick up this last available taken strength. And you see the same Riven's heartbeat slower message confirming that the timer was refreshed to 15 seconds. However, if you are not the very first person who was teleported, well, all of you non-first Fates chosen people, just simply pick up one Taken Strength each as you get teleported in. Pick up one each per round of Taken Strength pickup duty. 
That way, the first teleporter person, shown here as Vault, will wait and pick up the last one, which will trigger the timer refresh on the runner. Lastly, runners, please be sure to speak up and communicate your countdown so the last available taken strength can be picked up in time. Let's go step by step. On the left, we have the runners in the real world. On the right, we have the dream world. We start in Riven's stomach. Riven's heart will choose one random guardian. This person is the very first teleporter person, aka the trigger, aka the person who will pick up the last available taken strength every time there is a taken strength pickup round. So this first person is chosen. Please pick up the heart and begin walking. Here's a green arrow for movement. Runner should be counting down out loud. As he gets close to zero, rest of team should move away from him. This first person gets teleported to Dream World, marked as first person, number one. Random person on ad clear team is chosen. The second person picks up heart, continue to walk. Meanwhile, in Dream World, one taken strength will spawn. Only one will spawn because there is only one person teleported to Dream World so far. As the first teleporter person, you should stand by and be ready to pick it up. Listen for the countdown. Runner, continue walking. Runner, please continue to count down out loud. When close to zero seconds, Dream World person, please pick up this first, also known as the last taken strength since there's only one so far. Riven's heart beats slower. Runner will now have a fresh total of 15 seconds to continue walking. Meanwhile, the taken strength stacks will clear away. Indicated by the green arrow, the runner can continue walking. The runner was refreshed one time. Timer will run out again. So the second runner will get teleported. Second teleported person, marked as two. Someone else on the ad clear team gets chosen. In dream world, two taken strengths will now spawn because two total teleports. Second teleported person, pick one up immediately. First dream world person, wait on the last taken strength. Listen for the countdown. Runner, please count it down. When close to zero, first teleported person can now pick up that last taken strength. This triggers Riven's heart to beat slower and refreshes the runner's timer to a fresh new 15 seconds. Just like last time, the taken strength debuff stacks will disappear. Runner, just simply continue moving along, indicated by the green arrow. Current runner was refreshed one time. Timer about to run out will get teleported. So, current runner gets teleported. The third person to get teleported, marked by number three. Another ad clear person gets chosen. Please pick up the heart and continue walking. Meanwhile, in Dream World, three taken strengths will spawn. Second and third teleported people, pick up one each immediately, do not wait. I repeat, pick up one each immediately, do not wait. First teleported person, relax and wait by the last available taken strength. As usual, runner, please continue to count down. When close to zero, first teleported person in Dream World, please pick up that last available taken strength triggering Riven's heart to beat slower and triggering the current runner's timer refresh. Current runner will now have a fresh new 15 seconds worth of walking. Again, all taken strength stacks will now disappear. Current runner, continue walking please. Current runner timer was refreshed one time. The timer will run out, will now get teleported. Current runner is teleported. This is the fourth teleported person marked by number four. Another ad clear person will be chosen. Please pick up heart and continue walking. Meanwhile, in Dream World, four taken strengths will now spawn because four total people teleported. Second, third, and fourth people teleported. Please immediately pick up one taken strength each. Do not wait. You do not need to wait. First teleporter person, sorry, continue waiting. Because you are the trigger, you will pick up the last available taken strength. As before, runner, count down out loud. When close to zero, first teleporter person, please pick up the last available taken strength. Doing so triggers Riven's heart to beat slower, and it triggers the current runner's timer to refresh to a fresh new 15 seconds. As before, all taken strength stacks will disappear in the dream world. Runner, continue to move on. Timer will expire, get teleported, and heart will choose someone new. Rinse and repeat for the final people. This is the runner's route. Please follow this if you get lost. In general, you're running through the vault and its tunnels to finally drop down and reach the altar. Here we're gonna drop down in the stairs area room. Go towards the altar and make sure to dunk the heart into the fountain. And you're done. Congratulations. I really hope this guide helped. This raid was very tough to write a guide on. I also understand if anyone is turned away by performing the Riven Cheese Way. So comment what you guys enjoyed from this guide or what you didn't enjoy. I do read all the comments that you guys post. In any case, if any of this helped or you think it might help someone else, leave a like, consider subscribing for more helpful content, and I'll see you next time.